what are the biggest points of pushback you've received on, on the Netflix short idea? Like, yeah. What, what's the, I guess, I mean, bull thesis in it? Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, the bull thesis is that they're going to get the 500 million subs in 2025. Um, I think I, I really see that hard to do unless if they cut price really aggressively in, in the emerging markets. Our point is that they're past, you know, 50 percent uh, penetrated uh, out of their potential peak adoption uh, in developed markets, ex-US. And so the next wave of growth is going to come from a user that's going to be lower margin and harder to reach. Uh, we've already seen them cut price since we did our deck, uh, are experimenting with lower prices in India. That could drive subgrowth on the upside, but it's going to hurt margins and ARPU. Um, and I think what maybe the street's missing is that they're taking all the, the, the news of price increases in domestic market and developed markets and just saying, well, if they raise price by $2, this is, it all flows through. It's 100% incremental. This is what it does to cash flow profitability. I don't think what they're considering is that they're going to be taking that incremental money and basically using it to subsidize uh, you know, losses as they try to grow subscribers in, in emerging markets. Um, and in terms of the other, you know, pushback, I've heard that, you know, Netflix is a cable company um, and just like cable companies had to invest in the build out of their infrastructure. Netflix is also spending a lot, which is why they're not free cash flow positive. I, my response to that is I think it's, you know, Netflix isn't a cable company and they're spending on, you know, sp spending billions of dollars on movies and TV shows is a lot different than spell sp spending billions of dollars on uh, infrastructure. Um, and you know fixed assets, so I think um, you know that's that's different. And the, there's, yeah, I mean, you could go into a lot of reasons why they're just really not super comparable. But my pushback to that is like, well, what do you pay for a cable company at your terminal multiple? And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, those companies trade at six, seven times EBITDA. So if I say Netflix is a cable company, and I think that they're at some point at peak penetration, you know, they're going to look like a cable company on a growth profile. Let's pay six, seven times for that. My peak EBITDA number discount that back and you get a much lower stock price. So, um, you know, the, the, I haven't gotten any like big pushback in that where it really makes me second guess myself. Um, I do think they're going to have a good Q1. I try to be very clear about that on the call just based on the app data coming off a of strong Q4. Our catalyst calendar, our catal expectations for catalyst is really in the back half of this year into 2020 um, and where we think user growth uh, slows pretty significantly. Um, so, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's, I'm, I'm really excited for when they report earnings, uh, just to kind of update the model and see how things go. But from a risk reward standpoint, I think it's in our favor. Um, and if it does pop, that's okay. Uh, I think we're going to stick with it unless if I completely miss something, which uh, if I did, I'll own up to it. But, uh, you know, I don't think we did.